Hello everyone, it's Simon, the TA for Systems Programming here, or ATA, this is Michael. Um, I just thought I'd give a little video tutorial on using GDB, which is a debugging tool. Um, it's a really important, good, good tool to have on your belt, especially for systems programming, and just in general as a programmer, teach you a lot of important skills. Uh, John mentioned he kind of had a chance to bring it up in the lecture, but not to go through it super full depth. So I just thought I'd give a little demo explaining what it is and how to do it. So let me just check that, yeah, it seems to work. So I'll come over here. I've got the two things you need as a coder. I've got a text editor and I've got my terminal. So you can see in this directory, I've got a piece of code, some C code, and I've got the program, which I can just compile as again, program. That's all I did to get that. Now if you see when I run the program, um, it'll tell me no key given or too many. So that's just saying I need to give it an argument. If you give an argument, blah blah blah, I type in some text, it spits it out to me. Um, so this is exactly like cat. The problem is that it shouldn't be like cat. It's supposed to use this text here as a really simple form of encryption. If you've heard of the Caesar cipher, it does the Caesar cipher. It basically takes this letter, and this letter and adds them together. You should get a different letter. Take this letter, this letter, and add them together. And it'll loop through the key, adding them together to encode it, basically. I haven't made a decoder or anything. I'm too lazy for that. And then I just hit Control D, and that finishes the program. So, what I want to do is figure out why this program doesn't work. And I'm going to do that with a command called GDB. So, if I just quickly pull up the man page, GDB is the GNU debugger, which basically means it allows you to see what is going on inside another program while it executes. You can do lots of fancy stuff with GDB. You can attach it to processes somewhere down here. Yeah, you can specify a process ID and log into it. We're not going to do anything super fancy like that. There's also a guide here, all the basic commands you want to do, but not important. I'm just going to take you through the general process. So in order to use GDB, you just do a GDB program you want to do it on. Make sure that when you do this, um, you use the oh, I no to that. You use um, the name of the actual compiled program, not the code like we have up here. Some code.c we use program. Here, it's telling me that there's no debugging symbols found in program, which is a problem. So what I want to do, let me clear the screen. What I want to do is recompile my program, and I just want to add dash g, which is to add debugging symbols. That basically means that we take all of the source code of our program and we put it in the compiled version as well, so that we can um, see that code while we're using GDB. So, some code c dash g, hit enter, that all compiles fine. You might notice that the size of it is a bit bigger when you add the debugging symbols, so don't compile everything with size, especially for ed, it, you have some issues, but when you're debugging, dash g is good. Um, so now I run it, it'll say reading symbols, it's read symbols, that's excellent. So, there's a few basic commands for GDB. The most obvious one is run. I run the program, let's type note of that again, it'll run, ignore all this bit, and focus on here, it runs the program, and I immediately get the output and then it says it exited with an error code. So this is my program. I didn't give it any arguments. It gives me this no key given or too many arguments, or whatever, just blah, blah, blah. So if I type run and then I give it an argument, say I want my key to be beget, I, it runs the program and the program's running. So if I type text, hello, ooh, go away. Yes, it's late at night. Hello, I type world, I type woohoo, yay. I'm getting all these things happening, which is lovely. So, the program just runs. I type Control D, it finishes, and it exited normally that time. No issues. The trick is, obviously, I want to stop the program at some point and figure out what's going on inside it, right? That's the trick. To figure out where I want to do stuff, you can use the command called list, and you can put in a line number, say 40. It'll tell me the first five lines up to 40. If I do 30, it'll tell me a few lines around about 30. There's five lines before, five lines after. 40 just happens to be the last actual line. Now you might think, oh, this is great. I can read all the code in this binary. That's lovely. 
this is a bit of an ugly, horrible way to do it. My preferred way is you type layout source. And you get this lovely little window where you can use the arrow keys to browse the code. So I don't even need to have my code up here, right? I can just scroll through it in this terminal, which is lovely. Um, so you can see here, I have a little function, which is to take an encoding, something to encode the key and it does some encoding. So maybe that's what's broken. Or maybe down here, we've got, down here we could have problems. This is the bit that loops through all of the input characters and just, you know, gets a new char. Is it alphanumerical? If it is, encode it, um, then print it, and then increment the count and loop through the key, blah, blah, blah. So what I want to do is find a way to stop this somewhere. I want to stop it every time it reads in a character. So I want to put a breakpoint at line 30. Do that, you just type break 30. You can also just use B. You can just do B30. That will get you the same thing. In fact, I could do B, I don't know, 38. And it'll say it's at line 39 because that's actually when something happens. You'll see it's added it down there. 38's blank, so let's skip to 39. Um, so yeah, for most commands, if you just use the first couple letters, it'll figure out what command you want, which is very helpful. Okay, so now when I run the program, it'd say password is my key argument. Um, we get immediately into the program. Ooh, I don't want to scroll. Not do any of that. Okay, let's type um, hi. Okay, I typed in hi and I immediately got stopped at my breakpoint. Got my terminal down here, breakpoint up here. I should not use the mouse to scroll, that'll mess me up. So in here, I can type something like info local, and it'll tell me all of the local variables. So one of these is the key, which is password, that's great. Got the length of that key, which is eight. That seems to make sense. We've got this variable C, which you'll notice up here is the thing that we got from the terminal. It says it's 104. The trick there is that it's an integer. So if I type another useful command is print, which you can just abbreviate as P. I can type things casted to other variables, like a C expression. So I can print char C. See what I get? It's the character H, which will be my high from my input. Okay, so this C is storing my input. Um, next useful command is next. Runs the next line. Okay, um, I want to know is alpha C? I assume C should be alphanumerical. So this if statement should return yes, and I should go into it. So I hit next. I am inside the if statement, which is useful. So what I want to know here is you can scroll sideways to arrow keys again. It seems to be that this encode Caesar function isn't encoding correctly. That seems to be the error I'm expecting. So instead of doing next, which will jump to the next line and skip this, get the return value, I'm going to do step, which will step me into the function. So when I hit step, I'm now inside encode Caesar. If I'd done next, it would have run code Caesar and then gone to the next line. And I wouldn't be able to see anything in here. You can see it's also down here told me what my arguments are, which is very useful. I could also type info local if I wanted to see those again. E is, oh, actually, sorry, that's just my local variables in here, E, K, and temp. I could do info args and get the arguments again, which is H and P. Okay, so let's do next and next and see what my local variables are. Now I've got H and P is E and K. That sounds good. And temp is gibberish. I'll type next again. And let's print temp. It's 22. Okay. So 22 mod 26. That should be fine. That should stay as 22. So I'll do next and print temp. Still 22. Okay, now I'm going to add A to it. So that should shift it to be 22nd letter. Should be V. Pretty sure. Maybe W. So if I do next, and then I print temp, I get W, yeah. So I get the character W. So that's what I'm returning, right? So if I do next again, and next one more time, it'll step me back out here, right? 
Now I should be able to see print moon underscore char and it's h. So just above here, I return the value w, but new char is still h. So this function returns something, and assigned it into this value. But if if you're a noteworthy person here, you might realize that this is char new char, and this is char new char too. I've redeclared new char on this line. So these are two different new chars. I hope that that's clear. So within the scope of this if if statement, new char will be actually the proper encoded variable. But once I leave the if statement, this variable gets wiped away. And I'm left with the original one, which is no changed input. So if I do next again, and OK, maybe the, it will have done printf, but it hasn't actually printed it because it will be buffered. So I'll increment count next. OK, did I get my? Okay, if you're getting sick of typing next a bunch, by the way, you can just hit continue and it'll keep going until it finishes and this will, until it hits the next breakpoint. Sorry, continue and then it'll actually print once I get the new line and I got hi. So from that, I've determined that this function did actually return the value I wanted. So it's working. like that. I've determined that my encode Caesar function did actually return the value that I wanted. And that really the issue was with this new char variable, which got replaced. But that would be really tricky to spot, right? If you just sat down and tried to go through and read this code, you would assume that there's something tricky with all this math that's going on, that this is messed up in some way. Or you might assume that, hey, maybe I've got a wrong equals here. It turns out the entire mistake was that. So now if I remove that and I exit this, if you just exit without the program finishing, I'll be like, do you want to kill it? And I'll be like, yes. Okay. So, I killed that. Um, now, if I recompile it, it should work just fine. And I'll do it without debug symbols. Just to see. Oh, yeah, I've got to keep my password. Up. So, this should encode it in some way or another. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And it even ignored um, my punctuation, just as I expected. Howdy. Beauty. D. Maybe I run it with the one thing I expect is that if I do this should cause it to add nothing to the first character and one to the second character. So if I type a if I type a bunch of A's, they should become A B A B A B A B. Perfect. So my program now works, which is excellent. If I want to see it in action working and step through it again, I could recompile it with dash t and use gdb program. Okay. So that's that. So remember the key things to take away. You set breakpoints. You can also do other stuff. You can view the stack. Um, we can type so run a. We can. Yeah. Oh, I'll finish immediately. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Um, I can I can run. You can view the stack. You can do stack traces. You can do all kinds of fancy things with GDB. But I just wanted to give um, a little bit of an introduction into the kind of things you can do. So yeah, the general takeaway is um, general takeaway is compile your program with dash g. Use uh, use run to run it. Give it arguments, set a breakpoint beforehand, use layout source to see your code, and use next to go line by line. You can print expressions. You can actually print, like, add a variable or other things. But yeah, just next time you're having a problem with code, don't sit there and stare at it. Try booting it up in GDB and see if you can find and watch it do... Watch it make the mistake. You can just see the mistake happen and be like, that's exactly where it is. It's a much better way. Okay. Thanks for listening, and uh, good night.